people have a, and customers themselves have a really, really keen interest in trying to solve the problem, which is how do I become an active participant in helping managing our, our climate and my concerns about the climate and managing my carbon footprint, whether that's for my home, my small business, or at, at a work environment. And so that was the thing that really, really uh, you know, sort of made me keen about Perch Energy as I looked at a host of sort of clean energy companies that were trying to solve the problem for how do you democratize? The Clean Power Hour is brought to you by the Clean Power Consulting Group. I'm Tim Montague, your host. Check out all of our content at cleanpower.group forward slash podcast. Please subscribe on audio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you just hit that little YouTube icon, you can get to the channel and subscribe to it. We really appreciate that. We bring this content to you for you so that you can learn more about the energy transition, whether you're an existing energy professional or an aspiring energy professional. So please check that out. Today on the Clean Power Hour, Perch Energy. My guest today is Bruce Stewart. He is the president and CEO, newly minted. Welcome to the show. Tim, thank you for having me on the show. Excited to have a chance to talk to you today about uh, about Perch Energy and where we're going and look forward to getting going. Well, congratulations for your new role there and uh, looking forward to learning more about you and the Perch Energy Company, which is probably not a household name for most people. It is uh, a small but growing venture, and we're going to learn why and why you will soon see that brand in your community across the United States. So why don't you give our listeners a little background on yourself, Bruce? You're no stranger to energy. Uh, th that's right, Tim. Uh, I've spent, um, I guess, the last 12 years or so in the energy business, and prior to that was, uh, was in the technology um, web and online and mobile spaces uh, as well. But uh, sort of just centering in around the energy space, I uh, started off in the uh, 2010 timeframe with Constellation, Constellation Energy. We then merged with Exelon, which many of your many of your li listeners will know is one of the one of the larger sort of players in the space, vertically integrated from a generation uh, all the way up to retail, bringing uh, energy products and services to, to the market. Um, and then also, uh, uh, spent some time at, uh, GE, GE current, one of their, um, uh, one of their, uh, brands until we sold that was sold, uh, outside of the GE portfolio. And then more recently, um, was with direct energy. So it was fun having been at the constellation timeframe to then go to, to what was then a competitor, uh, direct energy. We bought, um, uh, energy choice in the same way Constellation did to consumers, uh, both small and uh, consumers and from homeowners and renters to small, medium sized businesses to large, you know, commercial, industrial and municipalities, federal government, you name it, both at Constellation and at Direct Energy. And um, and uh, I most recently uh, we, we uh, as we were building and growing that business, we found our we found ourselves in a place where we. Uh, we ended up uh, selling that to uh, another one of our competitors, NRG. So we we closed that transaction transaction about a year ago, uh, in the January timeframe. I stayed on for you know through the spring to help sort of run the transition, and then then decided to move on and give that give a give a a laser focus towards the clean energy transition, which is really where I'm excited to be now. Yeah, it's it's great to see how traditional energy executives like yourself are uh, segueing into clean energy within those traditional energy companies and then now making the full-on leap to companies like Perch that are strictly focused on renewables, especially solar and community solar. And I think this is uh, a trend that we will continue to see, you know, as, as the clean energy industries mature, it's only natural to bring our friends along from uh, the traditional energy economy, and we'll, we we are going to see a lot more of this. But tell our listeners what was it that caught your eye about the opportunity at Perch, and and what are you guys up to? Well, I've really always sort of anchored, you know, through my career on really focusing on the on the customer themselves, whether that's a the needs and interests and desires. Uh, for services that uh, large customers, medium, you know, small businesses and, and residential customers have. And frankly, um, the, you know, the energy transition that I was sort of intimately involved with from the Constellation timeframe was 
really about driving choice and awareness of choice, right? It's been around for a long time in Texas, but in other markets, it's really sort of got uh, a lot of a lot of uh, traction and momentum where people sort of like, oh, wait, I actually have an opportunity to choose an ele- you know, electricity or natural gas supplier that is different from my local util- utility. And that, there was a, that, that was a lot of traction and, and a whole transition towards choice and getting more and more markets, if you will, state by state, sort of continue adopting to create and give customers the opportunity for choices and, and alternative products. And then along along that way, obviously, you know, so whether it's solar, whether it was utility based solar and utility based wind, the opportunity for people to continue thinking about energy efficiency um, for demand side sort of management behind the meter sort of solutions were all part of the things that I've been involved with through time. And it was clearly, you know, as we as we all listen. Right. Uh, and I think it's a much, much louder drumbeat than it ever was is that people have, a, and customers themselves have a really, really keen interest in trying to solve the problem, which is how do I become an active participant in helping managing our, our climate and my concerns about the climate and managing my carbon footprint, whether that's for my home, my small business, or at, at a work environment. And so that was the thing that really, really, uh, you know, sort of made me keen about Perch Energy as I looked at a host of sort of clean energy companies that were trying to solve the problem for how do you democratize, how do you make available, you know, clean energy solutions to a broader set of the population, and how do you do that as an alternative, not just to rooftop solar, we know that's there for both homes and businesses, but frankly, not everybody can avail themselves of that. In fact, the majority of folks may not be, have the ability to avail themselves of that. And where I, where I saw the Perch Energy opportunity was to still think about how do you from a retail perspective, bring that to retail customers, both small and large, right? Um, and then how do you how do you, how do you also sort of accelerate people's understanding and awareness that you can actually do that through community solar, kind of like the Uber version of you? It's a shared capacity. You can get access to that that matches your consumption. I think I think that's powerful, and I you know and I believe you know through the research and analysis that customers really want to understand how to do that. And you need companies, and I, and you know I hope I hope Perch is, is one of those, and we tend to be one of those that helps guide, and help people make that transition to clean energy, you know, options and choices. Yeah, it's been interesting over the last ten years to see just in Illinois, the state where you and I live, uh, how a consumer's choice has blossomed. Um, you know, f- first we went through deregulation. Uh, So now there's 70 energy suppliers in the state. Then we got an RPS, Renewable Portfolio Standard, in 2008. We saw uh, serious tranches of wind power come into the state. I thought I'd work in wind before I worked in solar. Luckily, we got FIJA in 2016, the Future Energy Jobs Act, which really accelerated the solar and wind industries. And then we got CJA in 2021. the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, um, which is putting us on the map big time nationally now. Illinois is now a top five or six state for our climate goals and the growth of solar and wind and now battery storage. We have very good incentives for all three of those technologies. And, you know, in my own community of Urbana, we have a community choice aggregation program where a collection of cities got together and bought an energy contract to buy clean power from a supplier at a very low rate. I pay four and a half cents per kWh, which is just amazing, right? Um, And now I can, of course, subscribe to a community solar project. So if you are not subscribed to community solar and you want to get clean power from a local facility in your territory, you can do that. And you can find information at your utilities website at Ameren or ComEd or MidAmerican. Um, you can, of course, do rooftop solar. And we have very generous incentives for that. If you have a sunny roof and you own your own roof, which some fraction of the population will be able to afford. Um, so Perch is now... A, a kind of next of breed and, and best of breed technology platform that is going to give consumers even more choice and flexibility. And um, so tell us about that. You know, like 
two years ago to today and then tomorrow. Perch is in, tell us how many markets is Perch in today and where is the puck going? Yeah, you bet. Well, uh, simply put, Perch is, wherever community solar is enabled and even those markets where it's, um, it's in the early stages of enablement, we're sort of actively involved uh, with the policy making, with the r- rules and regulatory places to be, even in those markets that are emerging. So let's let's just say at the moment there's 17, you know, 18, 19 different markets that are that are out there. Not all are fully advanced, but um, and 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 all ready with full promulgation of rules and so forth. But that's sort of the market, and those are big markets. Illinois being one of those, right? You know, an emerging sort of set of pilots in New Mexico, for instance. Uh, New York being, you know, uh, full on, uh, full on and, and, and if you will, setting, you know, very transparent, easy to understand sort of uh, rules to allow that competition and to allow that development to happen. Um, So from our perspective, wherever, wherever there's an opportunity to sort of bring community solar to market, we're there and we're partnering with the uh, the uh, the solar developer community and those that are ultimately sort of aggregating solar projects that have been built, buying them and then holding them for the long haul. And we're providing the ability to sort of acquire those customers and then manage those customers over a 20 year time frame. So we have a our perspective is I think quite unique and valuable um, in the market that we're we're really been focused on the best of breed sort of technology stack, right? How do you give all of the reporting tools that are really required by the developer community and and the financial community that owns these, the asset owners of the solar development sort of farms? How do you give them all the tools to sort of really understand that you're keeping that at full capacity through the life? And that's an important aspect because that fuels, if you will, the ongoing development and sort of for the larger financial community sort of to trust that this is in fact a really solid sort of business play and a return. And then the second side, really do a good job of managing those customers of multiple sizes and creating a, a sense of diversity of those customers from residential, small business, CNI, and actually paying close attention to this notion of, you know, the equitable availability of clean energy sources to low and medium income uh, neighborhoods as well. Those are some of the things that we're really focusing on from from some of our uniqueness. Perhaps another uniqueness is we've been a, we've been a part of a company called Blue Wave Solar, which was uh, a significant developer through time, one of the earliest community solar developers, uh, first first in market in Massachusetts, for instance. So long history there and a pedigree of people who really understand the community solar market. And that makes a big difference if you're somebody who's developing and or owning that uh, that capacity. And it makes a big difference to the to the to the customers. So we might, you know, Perch might be a year old, so to speak, as Perch because we spun out of Blue Wave. But it's got a, a nice long, you know, seven plus year history uh, on top of it as a, you know, services provider and a, te- and a tech stack. Yeah, it's great to uh, it's great to see community solar coming on now. It's a little ironic that some of the more mature markets in the U.S., like California and Texas, are not don't have particularly notable community solar programs yet. Um, but community solar, if you don't know this, is is vital because it it gives consumers access directly to real projects, not just buying green tag energy, which is what I'm involved with uh, in this buying program through my city, which I'm grateful for. But I'm now looking at my options for community solar. You get a discount, so you're going to pay less over what you're paying today. So there's guaranteed savings. And and then you're supporting this burgeoning economy of green jobs, cleaning the air, helping the utilities make the transition away from coal and natural gas. Uh, you know, it's a it's a both and, um, and and so while there's community solar projects in I don't know something like twenty five or even thirty states out of the fifty U S states. There's only a handful of really strong markets. You mentioned Massachusetts, the the roots of of Blue Wave, uh, New York, Illinois, New Mexico, Colorado. Um, but so today, a handful. Tomorrow, probably all fifty. Eventually, like it's a no brainer for legislatures, 
for uh, leaders in the business community to realize, and, and of course, consumers, that this is fundamentally a consumer good to give them that choice to buy clean power. And these are, you know, t uh, 20 to 40 acre solar projects. Uh, and, and so they're not ginormous facilities. They're sprinkled across the landscape. And, you know, while we have uh, we have a hundred of these now in Illinois, and we're about to have several hundred more. They are not by any stretch an eyesore, and you you can drive by them in just the blink of an eye, um, and you don't notice them any more than a corn crib or a barn. So, uh, if for those uh, you know rural communities, this is this is a win win, and it's good for farmers, it's good for the landowners, it's tripling their income on a on a per acre basis. So many goods of of community solar. So what else interests, interested you about this opportunity, this particular opportunity, Bruce? I mean, the world is probably your oyster, uh, you know, being an executive in, in energy for as long as you have been and uh, the, the blossoming of, of energy, you know, across the board now. I mean, energy is just in the news every day. Of course, the backdrop of the crisis in the Ukraine is, is also shining a light on it. And I think... Um, you know, as the cost of goods and services goes up, people are focusing more and more on, well, how can I save money? How can I reduce my bills? Yeah. Um, and and solar is now part of that um, landscape. Yeah, it it sure is. I mean, I mean, you 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 couldn't have said it more succinctly. I mean, we're talking about energy more than I think we've ever talked about it, right? Um, it's a, it, and we're talking. People are talking about it at at, uh, at dinner tables, uh, talking about it at, at cocktail parties, because it's uh, it's omnipresent in our in our world. Whether that's a, a topic about gas pump prices, of course, um, or whether it's talking about the emerging sort of transition to clean energy sources of all sorts, wind, solar, that are that are in people's communities now more than they ever were. Whether we're talking about energy independence for us or energy resilience, right? Or whether we're talking about the ability for there to be energy affordability or energy equity, it's it's quite striking how all of those themes and conversations are are much more present. But what's striking as well is people trying to take the leap from the intellectual conversation about it to how do I actually make it actionable for me as a business owner, for me of, of a large business, for uh, for me as a mayor. Uh, of, a, of a large town or f for that matter for an individual homeowner or a renter um, and how do I and how do I accomplish it to your point if you know I, I'm I'm not the fraction of folks who can afford or accommodate you know some rooftop solar or other solutions so how do I how do I get access to it and that's honestly you know part of the dialogue that I think in the same way that we had to sort of change the dialogue and provide you know, be a better explainer, be a better educator and driving more awareness on choice from the earliest stages of just simply choice other than your local utility, which is how do I exercise? How do I know it's there and how do I exercise that choice? And what does it mean? What does this mean? And so there's principles that are out there that I think are are quite valuable for us, right? Oh, I can have solar without the rooftop panels. Okay, so what does that mean? I got it. It's a it's a great phrase, but what does that actually mean? Well, we build a solar farm. To your point, you know, of, of, of a modest uh, size that could uh, provide you know homes, businesses, and everything in the local community. It connects to your connects to your uh, local utilities, um, and it's producing, if you will, clean energy uh, from that community solar. And what I can do is I can actually fundamentally have a fraction of that capacity sort of matched to my load to what I use in my home, my business and otherwise, and I can be carbon neutral. Wow, that's a cool shared economy concept. Now you start to hear the the same way that people were, you know, whether it's Uber or Lyft or any other ride share, the same notion is you don't have to buy the car to still have transportation. And you don't have to actually ultimately purchase and build that community solar uh, farm. You can avail yourself of that capacity to match to your load and then accomplish the goal. And that's so, so important it, to just help people take, make that transition from a desire. And that's, it's really there, there. I know I should be doing something. I'm not sure what I can be doing. Our brand, Perch, wants to sort of help you understand in these local markets, this is something you can fee see, feel, and touch, right? 
It isn't the rec concept. It's see, feel, and touch. It's available for you, and and you can actually help continue to sort of drive the innovation and drive the ongoing development to get ourselves to, you know, an improved, you know, uh, carbon reduction go- meet all of our carbon reduction goals. It's 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 powerful stuff, and people want it. And that's why that's why there's dollars coming in here, significant investment, significant aggregation of players in the space to really, really, really sort of drive it forward. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Clean Power Hour or viewing it on YouTube. We do have a great YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, please go to cleanpower.group and hit that YouTube icon and subscribe to our channel. Of course, you can find all of our content on your favorite audio platform as well. So please give us a rating and review. I wanted to let you know that we are partnered with the Midwest Solar Expo this year. Check it out, midwestsolarexpo.com. You can get a 15% discount with our code, which is CPH15. We will also put that in the show notes, CPH15. The Midwest Solar Expo is the premier B2B solar and clean energy event in the region. It hosts over 450 clean tech executives from around the country, and it's a lovely event in Minneapolis, June 20th to 22nd. So please check it out. Back to the show. The phrase that's present for me is clean energy as a service. And to give an example, You know, here in Urbana, where I live in central Illinois, we have a closed municipal landfill. It was the first solar project I ever walked in 2016 with Scott Tess, who's a sustainability manager for the city of Urbana. And they issued an RFP. Once we got Fiji, they issued an RFP. Um, I think SunPower was the original winner of the RFP. And they uh, got a got a uh, contract, a rec contract, to develop a community solar project within the um, low income carve out. So we have special programs in Illinois for low and middle income communities, and and then Nextamp uh, ended up buying the project and then developing the project, uh, which which got commissioned last year. It's. It's about a five megawatt project all said. And so we're, it's providing clean power for uh, maybe 700 to 1,000 local low and middle income community members who prior to that just had a closed landfill in their backyard. This is very close to downtown Urbana. Uh, it's within a mile of the core of downtown. And you can't do anything else with a closed la- municipal landfill right, for a variety of environmental hazards that are contained within that. Uh, I mean, it just looks like a grassy mound, right? It's a, it's a pile of dirt that is, underneath it is a bunch of trash that is just slowly decomposing. And now it has a ballasted solar farm on it. So they, they put the solar farm on big blocks so that it doesn't hurt the cover on the landfill. And um, now you're getting this clean energy into the community. It was jobs, construction jobs, there's ongoing maintenance jobs, but first and foremost, affordable electricity for low and middle income residents. So shout out to the city of Urbana for doing that and to Anthony Starr for running the IPA, the Illinois Power Agency, which oversees this program. Um, we are we are all hands on deck now, you know, growing as quickly as we can in the clean energy industry. I'm curious, Bruce, what you see in your crystal ball when it comes to the growth trajectory for community solar and some of the challenges that we face, the supply chain issues, the uh, you know qualified labor issues. Uh, unemployment is very low in the United States, even though we just came out of a unemployment crisis with the COVID. Now we're in the opposite situation where the, the economy is booming and we don't have enough qualified workers to do all these jobs. So I'm just curious, though, what do you see coming down the pike that uh, that Perch and and your colleagues there are going to be grabbing onto? Yeah. So, well, you know, one of the one, you know, the two of the parties that we serve day in, day out, right, are those who are the developers themselves. Um, you know, all the folks on the, from the financing and tax equity side of the space um, to the large sort of uh, asset owners that are aggregating and and bundling up a lot of developer projects to build larger portfolios. 
Um, and there's a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of appetite for investment um, that's continuing to grow. Sort of map that with that real activity we see we see day in day out for you know existing portfolios. We're managing well over a hundred. Um, different projects at the moment, uh, solar farm projects that have been built in, across multiple markets. And we see that number just, you know, as, as community solar projects sort of growing exponentially. Look at look at other sort of data points in the market. We know we have, you know, associations, community uh, solar associations, you have the DOE and you have, um, you know, uh, research, uh, uh, research and advisory groups like, you know, Wood McKenzie, who have all put projections out there based upon what's happening and following the financial flow to show that this could be really, really huge growth. I mean, the DOE had a, had a goal of sort of 25, you know, gigawatts, you sort of, and then you've got other folks that are sort of backing it down into the high teens or, or the low single digits, no matter what, that's an exponential growth rate from where we are today. Um, and we, we're basically building perch to be able to service that through time, right. And to be able to be a strong partner, you said something else, which I'll, I'll just sort of scra scratch at a little bit, which was, you know, how do how does that growth sort of get facilitated and the kinds of things that happen, you know, in community by community with citing, with citing, um, you know, citing laws and permitting processes. Right. Um, with true education and awareness about, um, you know, uh, the ability for these to be strong environmental, good and environmental impacts in our market and wherever they're cited. Right. That's an important element. So all the rules and the regulations about the front end sort of development and build side, along with the transparency of those of those rules to the broader market. And then frankly, um, also the incentives, right? And are we putting caps in? Are we going slow? Are we going fast? Are we going at a nice moderated speed? Um, and you can see sort of different things happening in different markets like New York is as 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 really helps sort of drive and fuel it forward to your point, with, and same as Illinois with really good strong incentives put in place to help us make this transition faster. Right, there really is a public private activity that is happening here to achieve a broader goal. So really good companies pulling together to sort of create the services like Perch, like the developers, and and like the asset owners, combining those with um, regulatory and policymakers to help create really clear and transition goals with associations that are helping sort of say, here's the best of best practices that we can see so that when we're going state by state by state, to your point, ultimately getting to 50, right? State by state, we can have, instead of a patchwork, we can have sort of a nice consistent level of of, of, of rule promulgation that sort of helps, helps the industry to continue to grow again to serve that larger goal, which is giving customers exactly what they want, which is clean energy, access to clean energy sources. So if I'm a solar developer and maybe I'm in the business of long-term asset ownership, a lot of the developers are getting into that business of uh, it's either or, right? They develop and flip, meaning they develop a project and then sell it to someone else, or they develop and own for the long term. But then subscribing consumers to these projects, that's the, the end life, is then they have to, somebody has to subscribe hundreds and then thousands of consumers and business owners to these projects is a very different business than owning and operating solar farms. So uh, while some of them will do this, like Nexamp, they're a vertically integrated company and, and, and consumers here in Illinois are familiar with that brand because Nexamp is doing direct marketing now to all of the rate payers in Illinois saying, hey, we want you to buy uh, community solar from our solar farms. But what does Perch offer to your developer and asset owner customers and partners? Well, we've been offering for seven years at this point in time. So we're, we're, we're in the same game. Instead of actually being a service shop that only serve, services projects like Nextamp that they build, we're actually looking at all the projects that are being developed out there, forming those relationships and say, we will manage, we'll be your, we'll be your clean tech platform. We'll continue to innovate that. Every innovation cascades to all of the all of our partners all of our partners that have capacity we will fill that capacity we have a fantastic fill rate of filling that on time on their deadlines which is really important to financing and then you know as customers come and go for any number of reasons whether they've moved their business location maybe they've just uh shut the business down um or whatever the case is we'll we'll always be there for a good 20 plus year 
uh, of the life, constantly replacing and keeping that topped off. It's how it works. So we're that we're that player and provider that is active in the market, always has access to customers, both large and small, because lots of these projects want to have, if you will, a larger anchor customer that could be a municipality, a large, you know, investment grade uh, commercial industrial company, any number of, you know, large hospitals, you name it, that have a long, a long horizon to basically have access to clean energy and then small businesses and then also increasing residential customers. That's what we do. We are doing it to tens and tens and thousands of customers already. And we um, continue to manage them from the collections to the billing um, to the uh, questions and uh, answers to helping them with figuring out additional solutions for them through time, to be honest with you, which is, okay, I now have a renewable source for, through community solar, but how do I also think about energy efficiency could be another, you know, down the road sort of way to sort of help them get the full, a full set of services as well. Yeah. Well, in our last few minutes together, what else should, uh, you know, consumers, but especially energy professionals and developers know about Perch and, um, and how can they, uh, you know, learn more about how you work with developers? Yeah, you bet. You bet. Thanks, Tim. So, I mean, first of all, Purchase as a brand is 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 a new name, but uh, the people have been around for seven years. We're part of Blue Wave Solar, so we're we're that team that has a lot of expertise um, and capabilities uh, representing a lot of both asset owners and solar developers. We understand um, their needs and interest from both the, uh, an ongoing management of that and reporting standpoint. We understand the importance of getting the 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 project sort of quickly and timely filled with customers. We understand the need for an ongoing access to customers and good customer relationships that keep the projects filled. So through the life, they are uh, gen generating the value that was expected. Um, we understand the, the, that it really takes good quality customer care management. That's that, like any business that's in the customer space. You've got to understand it. You got to understand how to get uh, access to those customers and bring good value propositions to them, which we have here. Um, so those are the things that we're really setting in on, and we're all we're doing it on a, on a clean energy tech stack that's that's got that's that's new. It's, it's incredibly valuable and it's scalable. Um, and uh, we're we're just excited about riding along and partnering, really partnering in a tight way to sort of deliver for both our customers. Uh, as well as for our, our our clients that on the developer and asset owner side. You know, I note that if you go to perchenergy.com, just like the fish, perchenergy.com, you'll see a announcement uh, not only about you being the new CEO, but also that you have secured $7.2 million in a Series A funding um, what are you planning to do with that uh, that round of funding? Uh, you bet. So it's fun, fun one that we got. We got a lot of enthusiasm for this first uh, first round. Uh, the business has been around for a while, so it's not a nascent business. So sometimes when you think Series A, you think they're just getting started. We've actually been around, um, so we've got lots of projects under our belt. Um, but really, this is about you know how do we continue to build the capabilities on our tech platform. How do we continue to build additional sales channels and scale them? The markets are expanding. Uh, new markets are, are showing interest in getting involved in community solar. How do we support that? Listen, this is a this is a uh, for a lot of folks a confusing, lots of reg regulatory issues and policy issues. We're going to invest in being an expert and helping our our you know our clients, our partners truly understand the uh, the landscape right of where opportunity is and how it's shifting and changing because. Boy, it really is dynamic, right? Um, and uh, that's where we're going to spend it on, on on services for our our clients, growing our capacity to continue to bring a whole host of customers in. The ability to sort of service low medium income markets is important. We've just done that uh, in the New York market, uh, so that's up and running. So that's a capability that you know, you know a couple of years ago wouldn't have been there is now. So those are the places and the people and the people and the talent. So we're recruiting people to come in that have a passion for this and have expertise so we can really, really help do our part in this ecosystem to really drive the adoption and acceleration of, you know, 
clean energy uh, availability. Awesome. Well, we look forward to seeing Perch grow and succeed. I want to make a couple of quick announcements. We are partnered here at the Clean Power Hour with the Midwest Solar Expo, which is a B2B energy expo and conference in Minneapolis, Minnesota, June 20th to 22nd. You can get a 15% discount with our discount code CPH15, CPH15, and I'll put that code in the show notes. You can check out the expo at MidwestSolarExpo.com. They have a wonderful lineup of speakers and exhibitors, so it's appropriate for developers, EPCs and installers, manufacturers, financiers. There's always a strong showing from community solar developers, so please check out MidwestSolarExpo.com. You can find all of the Clean Power Hour content at cleanpower.group forward slash podcast. Please subscribe on your favorite audio platform. Give us a rating and a review on Apple and Spotify. That helps others find this content. With that, I want to thank Bruce Stewart, the CEO and president of Perch Energy, for coming on the show today. Um, Look forward to uh, circling back in a year or two and see how the journey's been for you. Thank you so much, Bruce. Tim, thank you very much. We'll see you at the Midwest uh, Midwest Expo as well. We'll be there. We're there. Excellent. Look forward to that. All right. Thank you, everybody.